Hello from the Norfolk Haldeman Community Hospice. My name is Maureen. To those of you who've been with us before, we're glad you're back, thank you. And to those of you who are new, welcome. Today we're gonna to talk about children and grief, which is why we're here at this neighborhood playground. And first I wanna mention that there's nobody else in the playground, we are being COVID friendly. Okay, so we'll start here today in, in the playground, as I mentioned, as a reminder of the importance of play for children, even in times of loss and grief. Actually, I'm gonna say especially at times of loss and grief. Play is how children navigate their world. From young toddlers on, it gives them a safe and comfortable space to learn, learn how to share, learn to be with others, to figure out who they are in the world, and it helps facilitate creative and critical thinking for children. Also, it helps children act out and process the, the absolute mound of information that's flowing through into them every day. As Mr. Rogers says, gotta love Mr. Rogers, play gives children a chance to practice what they are learning. I'm going to say that again. Play gives children a chance to practice what they are learning. Hmm. And when loss comes into their world, changing or turning it upside down, turning upside down what they know and understand, like adults, they need to learn how to assimilate those changes. But unlike adults, they don't have the depth of cognitive ability or life experience. So they take in and they process through play. How wonderful is that? Learning through play and creativity, I mean, where do we lose that? Hmm. All right, I think, I think we're gonna leave it at the playground now. We're gonna head inside and we are, it's a bit chilly out here. Weather's changed as we've moved along through these weeks. And we're gonna talk a bit more about children and grief and we're gonna do a couple of crafts, all right? But before we move in, as we like to do, let's breathe in Mother Nature. All right, just take a deep breath, all of us together, as I say every week. You can see me, I can't see you, so don't be shy. Just breathe in all that she has to offer us. <sighs> Our medicine for the day. And we're gonna take thoughts of this playground and we're gonna head inside. Come on, come on with me. Let's walk. All right, welcome, welcome to my house. I'm glad you came over. I'm glad you stayed with us, thank you. Before we get going on, on this part, I, I just want to again say, and I know we've done this many times when we've been together, that, that this is not meant for counseling or therapy in any way whatsoever. It, it's simply the Norfolk Haldeman Community Hospice wanting to bring you a little information, maybe a little education, some food for thought, and a, and a bit of support. Okay, And as you've seen, if you've been with us, on the previous weeks, we're not professionals at creating videos. <laughs> so I want to remind you again, uh, what we're doing is organic, but it's us here from our hearts to yours, and we just hope there'll be a, a little something that you can take with you from our time together. All right, okay. So again, we're chatting about children and grief today and we've come inside from the playground and we're going to look at a couple of things that we could do with kids to help them learn to express. But before that, I just want to chat a little bit. And I, I'm going to, I want to start off with this quote by a Dr. Wendy Harvin, and it is, well, I'll just share it with you. The greatest gift that you can give children is not protection from change, loss, pain, or stress, but the confidence and the tools to cope with all that life has to offer them. I'm gonna just do that one more time because I think it's important. 
The greatest gift that you can give your children is not protection from change, loss, pain or stress, but the confidence and the tools to cope with all that life has to offer them. Okay. Talking about dying and death can be difficult. It can make us feel uncomfortable and talking about death and dying with children, it can make us really feel uncomfortable. Yet from the moment we are born, we innately have a sense of attachment, which also means we have the ability to experience loss if we lose that attachment. And as much as we don't like or, or want to think about it, loss and death happen, even in the lives of our children. Hmm. Hard to think about, isn't it? And children grieve. They do it differently than adults, but children grieve. And often we don't see that, or often we don't maybe think of it as consciously. Children grieve in what we call chunks, unlike adults. They can do a little piece, and then they need to stop. And they just do that innately, which is wonderful. So, uh, just an example, you know, if a family may you know, bring their child, you know, sit them down and express them, explain to them that a grandparent has died. And then a few minutes later, we see the little one out, you know, playing with their toys or running outside and you think, you know what, they're resilient, they didn't even get it. They did get it. But again, innately, they can only do it in small pieces. They can take a bit in and then they need to go play. Because as we talked about earlier, play is how they process. Yeah. So food for thought, okay? Talking openly with our children about dying and death and helping them build coping skills, especially ahead of time, ahead of time. That's our best bet. Waiting till a time of crisis when nobody is at their best Mm, maybe, maybe it's not, not the best we can do for our children. So, again, if we can have those conversations before. And we can do this in our everyday living, right? It doesn't always necessarily have to be a big, heavy sit-down. I mean, children are young, they can only take a little bit, and they only have the cognitive ability to understand so much. But nature offers us those things just by the, by the cycles of the season, the life and death. And you know, we, could do a, we could do a whole video on that, but we're gonna leave that for today. So let's just, um, let's look at some ways to support the grieving children. Children know, I wanna say that again, children know when something stressful or difficult or, or worrisome is happening in their homes and in their lives. When someone is seriously ill or dying, it's best to tell them earlier than later. I know, because we want to protect our children, and in the years that I've, I've been working in hospice and palliative care, and I've gone into homes or I've supported families in residential hospice, I see that so often. You know, we don't want to tell our children, we want to protect them, we don't want them to know about these sad things. Hmm. But it's best, again, I want to say that, and I'll explain why in a minute. It's best to tell them earlier than later. Because often we think they don't understand, and they may not fully comprehend what's happening, but again, they will know that something is not right. And I'm going to just give you a little example uh, of one of the families that I was with. And there was a parent in the home um, who was end of life and had been end of life for several months, several months. And in these last few days, we did a lot of work with this family, um, extra work with the family and, and, and the children. And when the parent had passed, and the little boy who was six or seven, six or seven at that time, had said in the weeks after, he said, I didn't know my dad was going to die. He didn't know his dad was going to die. Hmm. 
Now for an adult, that might have seemed like a very strange comment. It's like, well, how could he have not known? There was conversations had with him. There was nurses coming in and out. Dad was in bed. There were so many things happening in that house that everybody knew. But you know what? Nobody used those words with that little boy. Because hmm. we think they know, or we think maybe they're using those words like, Dad is dying, if those are scary. And, and so I get why. I mean, I'm a mom, I get that, I get why. But that little boy really struggled afterwards because nobody told him that your dad, your dad is dying, and explain what that was going to be. So just an example, just keep that tucked in the back of your head for a moment, okay? So not being honest with children can lead to a whole lot of things. Um, it makes them worry more because like all of us, what we don't know, we fill in the blanks for and sometimes those blanks can be even worse than what we're going to tell them. Not knowing, we spend a huge amount of energy. It takes a lot of emotional energy for us when we don't know because we're trying to figure out what's happening. not telling our children at an appropriate time, they can find out maybe from someone else, maybe from a relative, maybe from someone coming in out of the home. I've had children who found out in the playgrounds at school. And you know, again, social media right now, my goodness, there's, uh, again, we <laughs> could do a whole, a whole video, video show on that, but there, there's so many ways that our child could find out especially in the social media world that we have right now. You know, those, are the, those are the important things that need to come from us as a parent or a guardian. Hmm. Children might be reluctant to ask questions and share concerns. Children may believe that um, they're not being told the truth. You know, if they find those things out later from somebody else, it's going to it's going to alter that trust factor that we, we work so hard to build with our children. Yeah. So, how can we provide good support to grieving children? Let's look at a few suggestions from our world-renowned grief expert I like to use, Dr. Alan Wolfelt. Be a good observer. See how children are behaving and don't rush in with expectations. Usually it's more helpful to ask exploring questions than to give them quick answers. So again, and that's, that, that point is key, and that's key in the work that we do in hospice palliative care. We don't try and pull somebody to us with our information. We, we give a space of safety around them and we move towards them and get a feel where they are in situations. So be a good observer and, and watch, watch the behavior of a child. When someone, a loved one, dies, don't expect children's reactions to be obvious and immediate. Be patient and be available. And that goes back to what I mentioned earlier. Children grieve in chunks. Okay? So they might not look like they're understanding it. They might not look like they're really bothered by it. But again, they can only do pieces at a time. So it's so important that we have patience with our children and we be available to them when they need and are ready to come to us. Open door. Children are part of a family too. We know that. It might sound silly to say. And reinsurance comes from uh, having the presence of people we love for all of us. Children feel secure in the care of gentleness and tenderness. We all do. So it's providing that loving, safe environment. And those sound like obvious things, but when we're grieving ourselves, that can take a whole lot of work and energy. Okay, so just things to be mindful for. Right. When describing the death of, of someone who has passed to a child, use simple and direct language. Very important. 
in the work I've done with children over the years and, and sitting with them, whether it's individually or in children's groups, some of the things that children share um, would kind of shock you. We don't use the words, Grandma fell asleep. Because Grandma didn't fall asleep, Grandma died. And those are uncomfortable words sometimes to use. We want to soften those a little bit, even, even with ourselves, even with adults. But again, we do no favors when we do that. Because I've had many child say to me, or their parents experience, that they're afraid to fall asleep because if grandma fell asleep and she's no more, you know, little Johnny's not, not jumping to have a nap, and, you know, or go to bed at night. So be very, very direct. And I want to say, you know, death and dying are a part of nature. They don't always seem natural by any measure especially when it's an un unexpected death but they are death happens dying happens death happens so we want to use those words that are appropriate for a child right? okay be honest be honest express your own feelings regarding the death and, and by doing that you you're modeling for children that's okay it's okay to express then it's the right thing to do. And many, many parents have said to me, well, I don't cry in front of my children. Adults don't cry in front of adults because they don't want to upset the other person. But, but what we're doing is, especially with children, when we, we're not showing our emotions, they hide theirs. And I have so many kids say, I don't cry in front of mom. I don't cry in front of dad because that makes them sad. But you know what? Everybody's sad. Anyways, everybody's sad anyways. Not crying in front of your children is not going to mm, keep them from being sad. It's just going to show them that we don't talk about it and that's not what we want to do, right? We want to give a space for children to feel comfortable, to move in and out of grief as they need to, as they're able to. We want to give children a space to feel comfortable to cry when they need to cry, to be angry when they need to be angry, to ask those questions that are so uncomfortable and, and hard. It's going to take everything we have inside of us to answer. Children, like all of us, children need to express what's inside of them. And they don't have the language that we do. So we need to be patient, we need to be clear, we need to give a space of love and comfort and understanding, and we need to model for them that it's okay. It's okay to feel all those things. <sighs> it's a whole lot. <laughs> okay. So again, allow children to express a full range of feelings. Anger, guilt, despair, that they're all natural and they're all normal and often needed feelings. And we talked about that uh, weeks back, it seems like months ago now. But those are all things that are natural and normal when we lose somebody that we love. Listen to children. Again, these seem obvious things, but we just say them out loud as reminders. Okay? So we don't want to just talk to them. We don't want to just talk at them. They have a lot to say and they have a lot of questions. And sometimes they just blurt them right out as we know, but sometimes it takes them a lot to figure out how to give word to what they want to ask. Okay. So we need to listen, listen to children, be patient. And that might be at the time of a death, it might be prior, if it's an expected death, it might be at the time of death, it might be in the months to follow. Keep our, keep our space open, right? a space of patience and understanding. And, and another key important, important um, piece mentioned by, by Dr. Wolfelt that I, I, I want to talk about is adults need to be able to recognize their own feelings because if we're going to support somebody else, especially a child, we need to be um, in tune with what's going on inside of here. Okay, really, really important, even just for our own sake. All right. So, just going to kind of do a quick review. <laughs> children grieve. Children grieve from 
infancy. So we are born with that sense. We are born innately with that sense of attachment. And if we can feel attachment, then when we lose that attachment, we feel loss. We can grieve. So right from the get-go, right? right from the get-go. And children will grieve differently than us. They'll do it in pieces. It's going to look different. It's going to take a lot of patience from us. It's going to give um, us giving them that space to ask the questions that they need to, for us to be able to answer in an honest and open way, age appropriate, but an honest and open way. It's going to mean we need to be in touch with our own sense of self and our own feelings so we can model that that's okay for our kids. Yeah. And if we can, and we all can, really make that effort to talk to children about dying and about death before, before that comes to our homes, to our lives, to our families. Nature's right there. The cycles of nature are right there. We plant seeds, they grow, they die. And I don't say that lightly, and I don't mean it in that light way, but, but that is, that is the, the nature of um, the natural world, the nature of us as human beings. So we take those opportunities when there's not crisis in our lives, just to, you know, again, open those doors for children to ask the questions that they might have. Okay. All right. Lovely. Okay, we have a couple of um, little oh, crafts, the, uh, ideas, ideas, let's just call them that because they're hardly a craft. This is no way like a Michael's craft thing, okay? But they're, they're just ideas that, that, um, that I've used over the years and um, we use them in, I have used in the children's camps that we've done, but just um, tools, let's call them that, tools that are helpful in um, giving children a place to express. Okay, because again, describing what all this feels like is difficult enough for adults, but when you're young and you don't have the language, cognitive ability, or life experience, even more of a challenge. All right, so we are going to, um, where are we going to start? Ooh, we are going to start with this. I have a whole bunch of junk all over my counter here, so just be patient again. We, we, there it is, again. Now, let me see, am I gonna ask? I thought my helper's here, so you might see some other hands coming in with us, okay? Jean's gonna help me just pull that down. And we traced this out earlier. And um, stay with me. You'll see the hands come in, that's okay. We're doing this together, all right? We're gonna pull that down. Uh, pull this over here for now. So, all right, this, this is, um, <laughs> yes, we are, we are beautiful artists. Um, this is a, an activity that I love to do with children. We do it at all the children's camps that I've done and I, and I it, really, really like this one. So. And kids of all ages, all ages, whether they're three, whether they're 15, it doesn't matter. This is a great activity. So again, get the kids to lie down and, and trace their bodies. Just that's fun. I mean, we had giggling going here when we were doing it. So this is, uh, this is one of our bodies here traced. And I can't say enough, don't get caught up in having to have it perfect. All right? It, it just doesn't matter. So it's not as much as, you know, the... the um, uh, what the art piece is going to look like as the process, okay? Important. So we got this body. So what we'll do with kids, and I don't have a lot here with us today. Um, I don't mean kids, but um, um, stickers and things. So I might have stickers. I use, there we go, pull those markers. Um, I'll cut different pictures out of magazines. We don't have magazines quite as much around as we used to, but all different pictures. So the idea is to have a whole lot of different materials for kids so they can be creative and expressing, all right? So, expressing what, you ask, I will tell you. Mm -hmm. So, what we want to do is we sit with the children and say, okay, it's your body, yeah. When we're, when we're grieving, when we're sad, 
when we're feeling whatever we feel inside of here because our loved ones died, it's really important for us to share that. And sometimes, I'll say with our children, we get a lot of different feelings inside of us. So how do we, how do we maybe draw that on our, on our, on our body here? If I think of, think of your loved one dying, if you think about that, you think about your eyes, okay? What did your eyes see? What did your eyes see? When you think about your person dying, can't draw. What did your eyes see? What happens with your eyes? So just that, that gives us a chance to have that discussion with our kids of did they see the person ahead of time? Did they see the person ill? Did they see if there was trauma or an accident? Did they observe that? Did they participate in the celebration of life funeral after? Did they see that? Right. So what did those eyes see? And sometimes, you know what, often we'll get this. This is what happens from my eyes, because I'm sad. Okay. So this all seems quite controlled. It's not what we're doing when we're working with kids. They're drawing everything. We've got often the little boys taking every sticker that has nothing to do with anything and sticking them all over. And that's okay. Again, that's where the patience comes in. All right? I'll have feathers, I'll have stickers of cars, I'll have stickers of Star Trek, Star Wars, whatever. It doesn't really matter. And, and they'll be putting them around and you think, okay. <laughs> it doesn't seem like they're getting it. But again, we go back to that saying, children grieve in chunks. So if we're spending, I don't know, a half hour with children doing this activity, right? And for 25 minutes of those, they're drawing hearts, they're drawing their best friend's name, they're drawing what they like to eat, they're putting every sticker, it doesn't matter. Because in that one moment, that one moment, we have a child, that's what my stomach feels like. My tummy feels like this. When I think of my mom, my dad, my grandmother, my sister, my brother, my my neighbor, when I think of them dying, my tummy feels like this. Again, it's hard for us to give word to those feelings that we have inside, so we need tools to help bring that out with children. Okay? We might go, what did your hands feel like? Did you touch, did you touch the person who died? Did you touch them ahead of time? What did that feel like? So we integrate that with just giving kids time to put the stickers on, whatever they want. We've got unicorns stuck goodness knows everywhere. It doesn't matter. This isn't about an end process of an art piece. It's about the process of doing. So, you kind of get the idea, does that make sense? I'm gonna say yes, because well, I'm talking to myself here, so. <laughs> A great tool to help children express. And it's something any of us can do, you know? piece of paper from the dollar store. Whether you have your, you get your crayons, some paper, they can cut out some stickers, whatever, and we just give a space and patience and time for our children to express. And again, if they're drawing goodness knows what, their car, a heart, it doesn't matter, right? We look for those, what we call those magic moments in there where they're able to share a little bit about what's going on inside of them, okay? And when we do this at our children's camp, it's beautiful because we have all these cutouts of these bodies all the way around our room. And it's quite amazing when, when family come after to um, pick up your kids and, and, and connect with us. It gives parents and families just that, that look inside to see what's going on within their children's thoughts, minds, heart process that maybe those kids weren't able to um, express with words. Okay? All right. Love this, easy to do, cheap to do, anybody can do it, easy peasy. All right, okay, so another thing, again, these are not difficult tasks, and I chose these for a reason, all right? Because if we are um, looking for ideas how to support our own grieving children, 
we're not looking to do major big crafts or we have to go out and get a whole lot of stuff. That's just overwhelming. All right. So this is something really, really simple. It's great to do um, with children if, again, if it's an expected death, we can do it ahead of time. It's great to do afterwards. So this is just a memory jar. Simple. Any jar, it doesn't matter. Use a box, use whatever you like, okay? <laughs> Decorate it up a bit. If this was a child doing it, they would not be using raffia because for the most part they don't like it. It would be stickers, it would be everything on here. Again, that doesn't matter. It's their jar, they can do what they like. So we'll sit with the children. Again, whether it's I'm doing work one-on-one -on -one or, or at our camp and and just, you know, again, it's all about pulling out, pulling out those thoughts, those feelings, those emotions inside, saying, what are some things that you remember about your mom? What are some things that, that, that when you think back that you did together? And again, depending on the age of the children is obviously how we're going to communicate, but just to get them to share some thoughts and memories. Um, they might be whatever. We're not going to say only good memory jar, okay? Whatever memories, whatever thoughts they need, because the good memories, those are great. Those are great for when there's sad times, and we might go and go look for a good memory in, in our jar. And, and the other, um, other memories give us avenues to have discussions with children that can be difficult. Okay, I'll give you an example. Let's see what's in our jar. Well, I know it's in our jar. I put them in there, but okay. just pull it out. All right. <clears throat> uh, I remember when you weren't sick. Right. And these all all these examples are examples that that children have shared when I, when I've been working with them. I remember when you weren't sick. That gives us a wide open door to say, what was that like? What's that feel like? How does that make you feel inside when you think about that? Okay. Great avenue for discussion with our children. Okay. Let's see what else we got. Let's do a couple more. Okay, that one's a bit of a heavy one. We'll get to that in a second. I remember playing Lego with you. And I actually can picture the little boy who, who, who gave us that example. I remember playing Lego with you. And be like, you know what? Tell me about that. We've got an alarm going off. That's okay. It'll, it'll stop, it's fine. So, you know, tell me about that. What was that like when you and Dad used to sit on the floor and play Lego? Again, a beautiful door for memories, for expression, expression for um, just that, that, that time to talk about the one that we loved. And again, that's so, so, so important. Children, as us adults, will need to talk about that person in the days to come. They will need to use their name. They want to hear their name. That's important. Okay? All right? So just examples. What else do we got? We'll do one more. One more. I remember, I remember you making food for me. <laughs> they sound simple. But you know those are important. Okay, so... That's just a, a simple idea, right? And some, I use papers and, and we can, you know, again, use whatever you want, have the kids decorate whatever they want. But a really good tool to, again, keep conversation, keep dialogue open and flowing and healthy, all right? So just a couple of ideas, simple, simple ideas, all right? So also, um, I'm gonna grab a few. <laughs> There's a ton of resources out there for children, all right? And, and you'll see at the end of our, of our video, there'll be some um, uh, resources that I'll put up at the end that you can connect with. There's some really, really good websites out there that, that are great for um, whether you're working with children or whether it's you're um, a grieving parent or whatever, okay? But there's lots of books children still, even in this age of everything social media, they still do like books, which is lovely, and there's lots of good books out there. Um, just a few. Where is Grandpa? Okay. Very, very age appropriate for small children. Some great photos, and, and just again opens up some really good space for dialogue. I have a ton here. It, it, I'm not going to go through them all, it doesn't matter, but the point is there's lots of books out there if we look. But there's lots of good websites, lots of good resources that uh, we will put up at the end of, uh, of today's video, okay? All right. Okay, I think that's 
a lot. It's a lot. We started off outside. We ended up here in my house. Glad you came over again. We did some simple, simple little uh, crafts that we use as tools to help children express. Because right? children grieve. Okay, let's leave it there for today. All right. Thank you again. Glad you were here. Glad you were here. You know what? You matter. Your grief, that matters. And the life of the one you love, that matters. Thank you.